St. Paul is actually still considered a holy place by the Dakota people. After traveling 7,000 miles to Ethiopia and then returning again to my home by the Mississippi, I feel like both the Nile and the Mississippi flow in my blood. Well, I think I'm at a place now, especially after being there, of feeling like I'm ready to say my work is spiritual work. It's not political work. It's not environmental work, it's not artwork, it's spiritual work. I come down here to the river when I want to rejuvenate, when I want to center, when I want to reclaim a sense of peace within. And it's almost like the river talks to me. Central part of my life. Well, in 1980 or 81, when Larry came back from New York State, the idea was to have a riverfront festival, which we did produce on Nicollet Island, which is north of here, about two miles. And we had uh, singers, dancers, musicians, storytellers that represented the diversity of people here in the metro area. Uh, J.D. Steele was on the program that year. Myself with my band Ancestor Energy. Uh, Larry Long, of course, and uh, a host of other artists. And it was a successful event, and we repeated it for multiple years, going into the early 90s. Um, the idea for the Mississippi River Revival spread upriver as far as Lake Itasca and Aiken, Minnesota. And so it spread from here also south into Iowa, Missouri. And uh, eventually there was a river flotilla of canoes that started up at Lake Itasca and went all the way down to uh, New Orleans. So we were trying to spread consciousness about the fact that because we depend upon this river, whatever we did to it in terms of toxins and pollutants, we were also doing to ourselves and that water is life. Our bodies are largely water. And so if we contaminate that, we also contaminate ourselves and our children, and that we could do a lot better than that. And that by caring for this river, we were caring for ourselves and future generations. So I think that kind of organizing also impacted maybe how the city of St. Paul began to think about Harriet Island. It's now a lot more beautiful than it was when we started off. We don't take credit for making that happen, but we take credit for changing the at atmosphere and the attitude toward the river. The ability of story, prose and poetry to transform the storyteller and the listener into something or someone else is shamanistic. And so I share this with you because I really hope, and I think those of you that know Lewis closely, this is the kind of work that he does, right? His writing, his environmental justice work, it's healing. This is still a sacred place, and it still belongs in a spiritual way to the original stewards of this land. Giving and sustaining life, unafraid to laugh or weep, keeping it real and unafraid to tell when we know it just don't fit, it just ain't right, or it hurts like 